What is SCC? What does it mean to be a part of Southport Church of Christ? So our vision here at Southport is about following Jesus, transforming lives. This is the, the mission Jesus calls us to, that we're not just a church with five pastors, but we're a church of over 600 ministers. Welcome to the service today, family. How great is it that we get to gather together in an online forum? How wonderful it will be when we get to gather together in person in the room, hopefully really soon. Today, we're going to start the service by singing a song that we recorded in lockdown last year, Oh Praise the Name. The Bible tells us over 250 times to praise our Lord. Psalm 149 suggests that we sing aloud from our beds in preparation for battle. So please join us by singing or by preparing our hearts for the rest of the service. I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's the entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name for.
guys for that time of worship that was uh, really encouraging and I hope that that got you all into the right frame of mind as we head into the rest of our service well we're about to head now into a time of communion and Pastor Pip will lead us through that in the next few moments hi Southport we're going to go into a time of communion and so what I'd love for you to do is to go into your kitchen and find what you might have to take communion with now, now, some of you are thinking, hang on, I don't have my grape juice. I don't have uh, the water crackers that we have at church. And that's totally okay. Uh, I've got here with me um, some milk root biscuits and, and some water. You know, one of the most meaningful communions I've actually ever had was when I was overseas. And uh, we didn't have uh, crackers or, or juice that just wasn't available. But instead, we had coconut uh, and coconut water. Because the point of communion is not exactly what these things are. The point of communion is us remembering who Jesus was. He gave us these emblems so that we could remember who he is. So if you need to, pause me right here and just go and get those emblems. It's okay, I'll wait. See, the thing that we're remembering in communion is that Jesus is the bread of life. The thing that we're doing when we drink the wine or, or the grape juice together is to remember that Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus' blood was shed for us. In John 6, 35, it says this, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. We do this act because Jesus instructed us to remember him, that every time we eat and take in that food that we need to survive, that we need to actually nourish our bodies, we remember that he is ultimately the one who nourishes us. That every time we drink, uh, every time we have a sip of water that refreshes our bodies, that he is the one who refreshes us, that he is the one who satisfies our thirst. And that we're able to do this. We're able to draw upon Jesus and to actually have him satisfy our hunger and satisfy our thirst because of the work that he has done on the cross. Because he has paid the penalty for our sin. We are completely forgiven. Our relationship with him is completely restored. And now he is the bread of our life. And he is the water uh, of our life as well. We do not need to hunger or thirst anymore because we have found the ultimate sustenance. So as you take communion today, whatever you're using, uh, whether it's even your, your kids' rice cracker snacks or whatever it is that you've found, do it with the remembrance that Jesus is your sustenance. Jesus is the bread of life. Do it with the remembrance of the fact that Jesus is the one that satisfies your thirst. And if that's not where you're at right now, come to him and let him satisfy you in these ways that he has promised. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have satisfied every need for us, that you have satisfied our deep hunger, our real hunger, which is to know you and be known by you, uh, to recognize our heart and our soul's desire, which is to be in communion and connection and relationship with our creator. Father, we thank you that you built that bridge in your sacrifice on the cross, that you restored that relationship and that we can come today 
We can come every single day and as we take food and, and drink that nourishes our physical body, we know that actually you are the one who sustains us, who sustains our entire being. Uh, you are the one who makes our soul alive. Father, we love you and we pray that as we are in different locations today, uh, as we take this time, Father, that you would be glorified in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks, Pip. Appreciate you so much leading us through communion there. Hey, can I just bring us up to speed with a couple of announcements about what's happening in church at the moment? Uh, last week, we launched our Focus for Prayer on Wednesday nights for the month of August. Our intent was to be together in the room here at church uh, on those Wednesday nights, but we launched for the first week uh, with an opportunity for us to do something at home by ourselves. Uh, we'll wait and see what happens with this week, but we may be in the same uh, structure and we'll keep you informed and we'll be as creative as we can uh, to give us the opportunity to be together in prayer uh, but uh, not together physically. Uh, a couple of things coming up that I want you to put in your calendar particularly for men. August the 24th is a Tuesday night our first uh, men's shed off the back of uh, all that's been happening. Sean Hart is our speaker for that night and he's also our speaker for the men's fishing weekend. Uh, the forms are up on the website at the moment, 29th to the 31st uh, of October, last weekend in October, and we're going to Morton Island for our fishing weekend this, this year. I haven't been there for a number of years, so uh, there's a lot of interest in it. Uh, so get those forms in quickly so that you can get uh, the right barge across and back if you want to do that. Also wanted to let you know about our next series. We've got Don Sisson uh, wrapping us up today as we uh, look at how to discern the culture that we live in. Uh, so he'll be up shortly to do that. But our next season, our next series is about people Jesus met. Uh, we're going to work through uh, a, a bunch of different encounters where Jesus is interacting with people on the road. And uh, it's going to be a great series. It'll park us in the gospel for the next little bit. Um, thank you for your faithfulness around offering as well. Uh, we've actually seen a drop off in this last few weeks, primarily in that season where we were wearing masks uh, and we're obviously in lockdown at the moment. Can I just encourage you, if Southport is your home, uh, to continue to be uh, giving faithfully. The details are on the screen uh, and it's important for us to be able to maintain uh, all the ministries that operate. There's still quite a number of things operating that face the community. So I'm going to pray for that offering and uh, for the rest of the service before Don comes and brings a message. Let's pray together. Father God, we're grateful for all that you've blessed us with. This season where we are locked down uh, will be a challenge for many of us. Um, we ask that you would sustain us and help us to just engage meaningfully with you uh, and with those around us to reach out for, to people around us. Uh, Lord, thank you for uh, the blessings that you have given us as individuals in this church. Uh, encourage us to be faithful in our giving and faithful in our service to you. And we just trust that you will really uh, speak through Don uh, as he brings a message to us now about uh, what it means to discern the culture around us and how that impacts uh, our walk, uh, particularly in the context of discipleship. We commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, folks. Hey, thanks, Steve, for that update. That was really helpful. Appreciate that. Well, families, uh, we've got something really special for you now. So if you don't have your children with you, I'd encourage you to hit pause. Go and grab your children and bring them back because Bobby Sue, our children's ministry team leader, has got a, ki a special kids spot, which is going to be coming up now. Thanks, Bobby. Good morning, Alive Kids. It's so sad that we can't be together today but I'm excited that we can use technology to stay connected and learn about God. So today I have a beautifully colored box and it has a mystery item inside. Can anyone guess what it might be? Okay, I'm gonna show you. So inside my box, I have my mobile phone. So what do we use our mobile phones for? We use our mobile phones to stay connected to people that we love and care about. Have you been using your phone more since you've been in lockdown? I have. 
I've been calling people from our church to see how they're going. I've been calling my friends and my family who I can't be with because I'm in lockdown at home. So when we um, talk to people on the phone, it helps us get to know them better and stay connected and build great relationships. Maybe we could call a friend or a grandparent this week and see how they're going. Did you know that in the Bible, it talks about God's people calling on God? The Bible is God's word and it is true and we can totally trust it. In the book of Jeremiah, verse 33, 3a, it says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great things. What a great promise from God that we can call on him, we can pray. Praying is how we talk to God. Do you think we need, need a phone to talk to God? No, we don't need a phone to talk to God. We can talk to God anywhere at any time about anything. We can talk to God when we're in the car, when we're at school, when we're at home, when we're at church. And we can talk to God in the morning, we can talk to him in the afternoon, we can talk to him at night time before we go to bed, we can talk to him when we wake up. God wants us to be talking to him anytime. He loves it when we spend time in prayer to him. We can praise God for being a good, loving, perfect father. And we can thank God for all the blessings in our life. We can ask him for help if we need it for ourselves and for other people that we know and love. God loves it when we use our time to call on him in prayer. God listens and he cares. So pause the video now and take time to pray with your family about the things that are on your heart. God loves it when we pray, so he would be so happy to hear all of those prayers. So good. So I've got a craft for you. The template is online. So what I'd love you to do is print up the template or draw a freehand mobile phone and write in your prayer request to God. So once you've decorated your craft and created your craft, you can put this on the fridge, you can put it beside your bed. This is your reminder to talk to God, to call out to God, to pray to God, because he loves it when he hears from his children. Once you've done that, if you can upload your mobile phone to our Alive Kids Facebook page, we have a Bible and a colouring in book, which we'd love to give to two families out there who upload their pictures. So we want to stay connected with you and we want to see what you've been doing. Thank you so much. God bless. Have a great week. Hey, thanks, Bobby, for that. I really loved that. So that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, we're about to head now into our sermon and our Pastor Don uh, will be leading us through that. And before he does, why don't you just join me for a word of prayer as uh, Don leads us in the third part of this a series we're going through on cultural discernment, focusing on discipleship. So join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we've been able to spend together. And Lord, we just want to uh, just ask that you would still our hearts. Lord, that you would um, speak to us in these next few moments. Lord, we thank you for the change that you make in our life. Lord, we are so blessed. Lord, and we hate to think of where our lives might be if it wasn't for your impact on our lives. And Lord, teach us what it means to have this resilient kind of faith. Lord, to understand the times in which we live and to have a really obedient and godly response to that. So we commit Don to you. We pray that you would speak through him, Lord, and guide us in some things we need to know. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Don. Hello, church. How are you? Are you ready to hear the message today? Let the person next to you that you are ready, and there is none, just tell yourself you are ready. Church, we are now in the last part of our series looking at having resilient faith. Through discipleship, we can engage and understand in the times in which we live and discern the culture around us and engage with it in a way God is honored, exalted, and at the same time develop a faith that will endure and thrive to the very end. 
cultural discernment is about teaching our people not just what not to think, but also how to live. We must prepare them for the world as it truly is, not just we wish it to be. In the Bana research, the data showed us that 54% of people aged 19 to 29 are leaving the church for a long period of time or permanently. Very sad. And 36% of people are staying, but they are so disengaged with their faith. And only 10% we have what is called resilient faith. The question we need to ask ourselves as here at Southport Church of Christ, what does it look like to take part in a robust learning community? We want our future generation here at Southport Church of Christ to have a resilient faith, but at the same time, continue to make an impact to their community at large. You know, my granddad was a master carpenter Builder and plumber. He built a lot of houses during his time. He was also a devoted follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was highly skilled craftsman. In fact, he built a round dining table and chairs that is so solid that lasts from generation to generation. And he taught my father how to become a master plumber. At the same time, my father became a jack of all trade, all trade in his time. He could fix about anything and everything. When I was a kid, I used to watch my dad fixing uh, things at home, and I asked him too many questions while he's fixing things um, during the process of doing things. Uh, maybe because of my uh, curiosity, I watched him fixing things so that when he's not around, I can fix it, I thought I could. I used to copy him fixing things. Like, for example, one day I dismantled a radio and tried to put it all together, but I couldn't put it all together. And so my dad used to get mad at me uh, for wrecking his stuff. But one thing my dad taught me is how to cook. For that, I am truly grateful that he took his time to teach me how to cook. However, none of my dad's and granddad's ability rubbed off on me. I was known as the son of a plumber, but my dad didn't pass his knowledge and his expertise on to me. No, I am not a jack of all trade, but I can fix some minor household things that need replacing and mending around the house. Some people say to me, Don, you're a son of a plumber. Therefore, you can fix this one for me. You should know how to fix this together for me, right? You're a son of a plumber, Don. <laughs> and I get so annoyed that sometimes I can't fix things the way my granddad and my father fix things, especially when people ask me to help them with their uh, DIY things. You know what? I can put the blame on my dad that he didn't spend time with me and teach me his knowledge and expertise. But also, also, I can blame myself that I didn't have the interest in learning those skills and gaining knowledge. Someone might have said to you, you are a son of a pastor, a son of a missionary, a son of an elder of the church. Or maybe you've been a Christian uh, for a long, long time. They said, you should know how to lead people to the Lord and disciple them, right? If we are honest enough, we can say to those people, no. Actually, I don't know how to lead someone to the Lord or disciple someone because no one has ever had the interest in investing time in me for us to read the Bible together, to pray to join it together in the Christian life with me. Maybe some of you, you are in this situation right now. You have been a Christian for many years. Our, our big brothers and big sisters, our uncles and aunties in the faith, 
have not invested their time to disciple you. Let me encourage you that being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is never too late. And it's never about age. Amen? You, become, uh, you can become a disciple or a pupil or learner for life. Regardless of your age, achievement, uh, status, or education, what matters the most is that as long as you have a teachable attitude, uh, you are willing to grow and continue to grow. And when it comes to building resilient faith that will endure and thrive to the very end, discipleship is the solution. Why discipleship is important? And before we answer these questions, we, we, we got to define first what is a disciple. What is a disciple according to the Bible? A disciple primarily refers to a dedicated followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the word disciple, uh, the Greek word is mathetes, which means more than just a learner or a student. Yes, more than a learner. A disciple, a, a Christian disciple is a believer who follows Jesus and then offers his own imitations of Christ as a model for others to follow. And a fully devoted disciple is also a leader of others who attempt to pass on this faith to his followers with the goal of repeating the process. Here is the reality, church. Whether you like it or not, you and I will be a student or learner of some sort for the rest of our lives. But the questions remain as to who is influencing you or teaching you? Is it the media? Is it Facebook, Netflix, or reality TV programs? Like I said in the beginning of our message, cultural discernments about teaching our people not just not what to think, but also how to live. We must prepare them for the world that we are now. Why? Because we are living in a culture where entertainment and ideology are mixed together and church communities are being influenced without even knowing it. This is why discipleship is important. Discipleship helps develop grow in their faith, to grow in maturity and wisdom and, and build their faith on a strong foundation so that they too can disciple and lead others toward the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why our first point is this, is to help us to become more like Christ. Disciples is important because we want people to become fully committed followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in discipleship, it ensures thorough teaching of the Word of God. It is a way to be sure that believers don't fall to the cracks, becoming complacent and without purpose. That's why Paul says in Colossians 1.28, we proclaim Him, that is Christ, admonishing every person and, and teaching every person with all wisdom so that that's the purpose. We may present every person complete in Christ. And that is why disciples is important. Because it develops resilient faith that is tough and endures at the end. Like uh, the photos of an elephant trying to crash the car. The elephant is putting all his weight behind, uh, trying to destroy the car. But the car is tough, and it was made to last. Just like a person who has been trained and well-equipped for life will weather any storm that is thrown at him or her. Because they know how to adapt and able to discern the culture they live in. They are not easily persuaded by the culture or persuaded by any teaching and philosophies or conspiracies. They are like the people that Paul described in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 
and 7. It says, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, so walk in Him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in Him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and now be flowing with gratitude. And that is why it is important uh, to be part of a life group here at SCC so that we can all grow together in love and in unity because uh, through life group, we are better together. And through life group, you will find that you are not alone because the people around you care for you and love you and welcome you and that they are there for you when you need their help or assistance. And if you're still not part of a life group, please let us know, and we are happy to help you find a life group near you. And church, when we are deeply rooted with the Word of God, no one will be able to deceive us because we know who we are in Christ. We know our true identity. We know that we are saved and have received uh, forgiveness through His blood, and heaven is our home because of the eternal life that Jesus has given us. And we know also that we are empowered through the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And having a resilient faith is about being deeply rooted with the Word of God, established in the faith and overflowing with joy and thanksgiving in the Lord Jesus Christ. And church, here's the question. Are you in love with Jesus? And if you are, what are the signs or the fruit or the evidence that you are in love with Jesus? And can people around you confirm that you are in love with Jesus? Can the people at work, at play, or at home say, this man or this woman or this young man or this young woman or this kid have been with Jesus? Are you more loving than ever before? Are you more patient than ever before? Are you more generous to the needs of others than ever before? Is your love for Jesus and others continue to grow more than ever before? And these are the questions that we need to think. And that's why it is important that we have discipleship because it helps you to become more like Jesus. People don't follow you what you say. People follow you what you do. This is the reason why a disciple is important because Jesus commanded it and modeled it for us. And that's the second point. Jesus commanded it and modeled discipleship. The Lord Jesus Christ is the prime example of discipleship. He spent his entire life ministry to build, to equip, to train his disciples, to carry out his great commission. And his mission is purposeful and intentional. It says in Matthew 28, you know it, verse 18 to 20, it says, Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all authority and in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I commanded you, and behold, I am with you always. What a promise. Church, the Great Commission is Jesus' mandate for discipleship. It is a command for all of us to do and to obey if we want to be truly called his disciples. And this is what Tom Rainer says this. Thriving churches have the great commission as the centerpiece of their vision, while dying churches have forgotten the clear command of Christ. Many churches continue to decline, and only 10% are called to have resilient faith. Why is that? Because some churches, uh, discipleship is not their top priority. And pastor and author Rabbi Galati says this, when the church becomes an end in itself, it ends. When Sunday school, as grace as it is, becomes an end in itself, it ends. 
When a small group ministry becomes an end in itself, it ends. When the worship service becomes an end in itself, it ends. What we need is for discipleship to become the goal. And then the process never ends. The process is fluid. It is moving. It is active. It is a living thing. It must continue to go on. Every discipleship must make disciples. Church, the, Bible, the purpose of discipleship is to grow us to become mature followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that we too can lead others to the Lord and disciple others as well. Here at Chatport Church of Christ, we need to be united as one to participate in building a robust discipleship community. So, where do we start from here? Disciples start at home. We need to teach our children at a very young age that discipleship starts at home with mom and dad. Teaching their children about the truth of God's word. Yes, we go to church and we bring our children to Sunday school so that they can learn as well about God. But that's only once a week. Who is teaching our children about God from Monday to Saturday? Where do our children get their spiritual food from Monday to Saturday? And this is what Christina Embry says. Discipleship begins at home. Discipleship at home is not about doing more. It is invi about inviting Christ into what you already doing. That is why Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up the child in the way he should go or she should go. When he or she is old, she, he will not abandon it. In Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 7 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And Paul says this in, in Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Our children need to see uh, from us parents that our passion for God is 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Modeling it to our children. And our passion for God is a lifestyle, not just another activity for us to do. We must pray for them every day, and then we leave it to the Holy Spirit to bring fruit. Discipleship is important because it helps us to grow, to become like Jesus. Discipleship is important because Jesus commanded it and made, model it for us to follow. And the last point is that discipleship is important because disciples grow when we invest in others. Here Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, he says, imitate me just I imitate Christ. And in this verse, Paul is laying out the key actions and principles of discipleship, imitating your teacher as they imitate Christ. Because as a disciple of Christ, we are called to be transformed into the image of God. And I like this passage in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, 1 to 5. We can see here Paul and, and Timothy's wonderful relationship. It says there in verse 1, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of my witnesses in trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. And he says, join me in suffering like a so good soldiers of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. And similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown, except competing according to the rules. 
And shares in this passage, we, we, we see that, that the persecution of Christians was so widespread in Paul's time, and Paul was in prison. And because of this, everyone in Asia had deserted him. Some had, uh, no doubt, even deserted the Lord Jesus. In view of the surrounding persecution, Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul calls Timothy to use a spiritual gift to be an ashamed of Christ and the gospel. And Paul says, you, my son, be strong in the grace of God. Paul calls Timothy his own spiritual son. He, here we can see that a strong relationship between uh, Paul and Timothy. Paul invested time and effort to equip this young pastor called Timothy because Timothy's character is a bit timid and slow. He's encouraging Timothy to be strong in spirit and purpose. And Paul is not playing games with Timothy because in this passage we see Paul is asking Timothy to have a solid commitment and loyalty to him as his mentor. If you look at verse 2, Paul is asking Timothy to pass on to the things that Paul taught him to the same people who are willing to be taught the way Timothy was taught. Those faithful men and women who will be able to teach others as well. This was imp important for Timothy. He needed to hear this exhortation. And church, we also need to hear this exhortation. Because discipleship is to be all in. Discipleship is to be all in. You cannot become an effective disciple of Christ if you are half-hearted. And famous author Timothy Keller says this, discipleship is not an option. Jesus says that if any one would come after him, he must follow me. And if we are going to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, we must be strong. Why? Because our current culture is under the influence of this dark world where Satan masks himself with entertainment, instant pleasure, with no satisfaction, but ended up in mess and pain. Because we are in a world that is antagonist toward Christ, his teaching and his people, but also because of our tendency to sin as well. We get discouraged and sometimes wander away from Christ. And in the midst of all of this, we must be strong to complete what God has called us to do. Church, we can weather the storm in this culture we live in when we have someone like Paul and Timothy in our lives who are a bit mature in the Lord to help us on our spiritual journey. And here's the challenge I want to put to support. Church, I want to challenge all of you who are mature in Christ to put up your hands and say, I'm willing to invest my time. I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice time and effort to make a difference in someone's life. I want to be used by God before he takes me home. I want to be used by God to impact this next generation for Christ. In church, you don't need to be an expert of the Bible before you can disciple someone. No. You don't have to have a degree in theology before you can disciple someone. All we need from you is a willing heart, a teachable heart, and a humble heart. That's all we want from you. We have five pastors here at SCC. Talk to us, and we will help you and supply you uh, resources to facilitate it. And maybe you, you are a new Christian and you are new in the faith. Maybe you are new here at Southport Church of Christ. Or you've been in this church for many, many years and you heard God is calling upon your life today and He's calling you and you are willing to be discipled. And here is the good news. This is win, a win-win situation. And just want you to imagine this. What if 50 people say, I am willing to join a robust learning community. I am willing to disciple and willing to be discipled. What do you think that's going to look like? What do you think that's going to look like? And these 50 people will continue to multiply every year. By the end of five years, how many people do you think 
are in the robust discipleship community. And if you are a mathematician, you know how many people there will be in five years' time. In church, we can, in, we can change the face of Southport and, and the Gold Coast for Christ and for His kingdom. Think about how many families will be saved. Think about how many marriages will be saved. Think about how many people are struggling in their addiction will be able to be restored. Think about how many members of family be reconciled to each other and how many people will be competently sharing the gospel and how many angels will be rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repented five years from now. Are you getting excited just thinking about it? Are you? Let's drink together, let's pray together and respond to God's calling together. Today is the day to make that commitment. And I'm going to pray. And if God is convicting you, just tell God that you are willing. And today you are making a commitment to disciple someone or be discipled. And then let us know about your response. And you can uh, give your name to Gloria in the office. I'm going to pray. And after I pray, I'm going to give you some question to reflect on. Whether the people at home or the people in your life group. Why don't we pray? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. That out of what's happening in our world today, you're still in control. You still want to show that you have the power to change people for good. And Father, we heard your message today. Lord, we want to follow you. We want to be a people of faith that is reaching out to the people who are in need. And Lord, I pray as people of South Port Church of Christ that you are speaking to those people right now. Lord, I pray that as you touch their heart, they will respond to your calling. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. And just discuss those questions. Thank you. See you next time.